For astronomers and astrophotographers, being in the dark is a wondrous thing. For others, the dark may appear scary and this may deter them from observing the wonders of the universe. In this video, I am going over a few tips that should help ease your mind if you or a friend are afraid of the dark. Hi there, my name's Dale and here at Astroscape we go over all things astrophotography starting from the very beginner level and working our way up from there. If you're new here, if you like what you see as you're watching this video, please do consider giving this one a like. Now while this channel is primarily about astrophotography, every now and then I'll sprinkle in a video just like this one to help the International Dark Sky Association out with their outreach on light pollution. Alright, just to get started, I am an active International Dark Sky Association member. I run the chapter here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And this video is designed more for my astrophotography and astronomy viewers who are also looking for a little bit of help on their outreach about light pollution or to help ease the mind of a friend or a loved one. You might know a lot of these tips already but hopefully a few of these tips here can help let's get going all right so the first thing here is defining light pollution so what is light pollution light pollution is the presence of artificial light at night and unfortunately it's getting worse every year and the sad part about that is every year fewer and fewer people are experiencing a truly dark night look at this map of the u.s on a light pollution map and you can see that the eastern half is pretty well light polluted, then Europe definitely has some work to do to uh, reduce the light pollution there. Over time, this has caused some fears to crop up, such as not knowing what that sound is off in the distance, or the fear of what you can't see, or the fear of physical harm because of the previous two. All of these are playing a part in our battle against light pollution. These questions come up constantly. Before I get started on these, I do need to put out the disclaimer that I am not a doctor, I am not a psychiatrist, and I am not a wildlife expert. These are all based on experiences that I've had being out as a hiker in some places where it's real dark or living in a city, again, where there's some dark corners and just seeing how people react when talking to them about light pollution. All right, the first thing we're gonna go over is animals and the world is full of some amazing creatures. There's a lot we see during the day, but there are a ton that are active at night. And the thing to keep in mind here is that animals are everywhere. So if you have to travel somewhere for astronomy or you're taking your friend or loved one out somewhere that's actually dark, just know that there are going to be animals around. And yes, it can be a little bit scary when you hear them pitter-pattering all around you. Like I mentioned, I am an experienced backpacker. I love hiking and camping out in the woods. And a lot of times I've found that all of those sounds you hear isn't really anything scary. A lot of the times, at least in the areas I've gone, it's usually a deer foraging for food or a squirrel running between two trees on the ground ruffling all the leaves. But that's not only animal life out in the wilderness. If you are in a suburban area and you hear something running around, yes, deer and squirrels do come into suburban areas, but at the same time, they also might be a stray, so a stray dog or a cat. That might also be what the sound is, you know, outside of your property. And yes, for strays, one might come up to you, maybe begging for food, but I wouldn't expect that to be the case because some strays do tend to shy away from humans because of past experiences. Moving back out to the wilderness, if an animal does come up to you, it might not actually get close. It's curious. It's just wondering what you're doing there. You're not natural to their environment. It'll look, but not come close. And this is especially the case with pack animals such as coyotes. If there's a coyote by itself and you can see it and it can see you, it generally won't approach because they are pack animals. When they come up alone, usually that spells bad things for them. So they just generally go, huh, what is that? And get the little dog turn head going. You know what I'm talking about. And then they tend to move on. But like I said, there are a lot of sounds you'll hear out there. It's just learning to identify what is what. You know, is it a squirrel? Is it a deer? Is it a coyote? Is it a stray dog? You know, once you learn what it is that's making that sound, it generally does tend to calm your mind a little bit. When it comes to dealing with animals, there are a few things you can do to help keep those animals away. And just as you are leery of their sounds, they're leery of yours as well. And one thing you can do to help deter that is listen to music or a podcast, anything. Now, I tend to listen to music or a podcast when I'm out there just to give me something to hear, just to keep my mind occupied. Uh, if I'm waiting for an image to finish or if I'm out doing visual, it's just something background noise that 
helps keep me focused on what I'm doing. Now, when you're doing this, keep in mind that you don't want it to be so loud that the nearest human neighbor hears it, especially if they're a half a mile away. That's a little bit overkill. But you do want to have it loud enough that it can be heard maybe 10, 15 feet away. And just remember that sound carries better at night and animals have better hearing than we do. So while you might be able to walk 20 feet away and not hear it, something nearby off in the tree line will be hearing that music. And just remember that the music is not natural to their environment and they won't want to go near it. In the event that an animal does approach you, again, I do want to give the disclaimer that I am not a wildlife expert. It is a good idea for you to read up on what is in your area or if you're traveling, what is in the area you're traveling to and learn how to deal with them. The couple tips here I'm about to give you are very general and work in most situations, but not all of them. Again, please read up and learn what's in the area. All right, so the first thing here you can do is if you had to travel, stay by your car. If you get spooked, hop in. If you're in your backyard, go inside for a little bit. And just like my previous tip here about sound, be loud, be as loud as and intimidating as you can. And generally they will back off. Like I said, it's a very general tip. Please read up on the species in the area that you are going to, so that way you just know what's there. Most of the time they won't bother you, but in the rare event that something happens, you know what to do. For anyone who has to get out of city lights and travel to stargaze or do astronomy, one of the things you can do is let somebody know where you're going. Give them the time, date, and location that you are gonna be at. That way they know when and where you will be. And then if you give them your return time too, they know when you're planning on being home. In today's world, it's really easy to stay connected and make sure that you know where somebody's at. And yes, this is something that translates into pretty much everything. Just having somebody know where you are helps make things so much safer. Or better yet, bring that person with you. Having them with you means that you'll strike up a conversation and it'll act just like that music tip that I told you. And if there are more than two or three people, animals will see a pack of people and nope right out of there. They will not want to stick around. If you don't have somebody that you can bring along with you, if you have a dog, bring them along. Play with them while your images are shooting or just enjoy laying under the stars together and enjoy that too. They have very sensitive hearing. They will let you know if something's nearby. However, I do want to add as somebody who owns a reactive dog, please keep your leash on a dog if you use this method. Now, while my dog is a sweet guy and he would never harm anybody, he does bark pretty loud and it scares the crap out of anybody approaching. So please keep your dog on a leash so that way all parties are safe. Now let's go over fear of what you can't see. Now, while animals play a very large part in what you can hear out in the night, they are also part of the fear of what you can't see because you can't identify what that sound is. And one of the best things you can do when you're out there is give yourself time to adjust to the darkness. One of the main things in today's world that people forget is that our eyes take up to 30 minutes to fully adjust to the darkness. Just the mere act of walking outside, you even have to give yourself a minute or two to be able to see, but to fully dark adapt, it takes up to 30 minutes. Okay, and while this is well known in the astronomy and astrophotography community, this is something for your friend or loved one who may be a little bit scared of the dark. Have them let their eyes adjust. And when it comes to flashlights, make sure they're using red flashlights. That way, once they fully adapted, they don't lose it. All right, and for somebody who is a little bit scared of what they can't see, what you can do is go out on a full moon. Go out on a full moon and just enjoy looking at that full moon just for a few minutes at a time. And then over the course of a few months, go out in different moon phases where it's a little bit darker, working your way towards a new moon, that way it's fully dark. From there, you can go out to dark sky sites and kind of repeat the process and just take it slow and build up. There are tons of wonders up in the night sky that fear can prevent people from seeing, and this is just a good step to ease into it. And this tip here is pretty much for anybody who <laughs> travels or has to travel, go there during the day. Learn what everything looks like during the day. You'd be amazed at, as a backpacker, how many times a tree stump gets mistaken for a bear in the dark. But then I wake up the next day and go, really? It was a tree. So definitely go over to the spot you're gonna be at and look at it during the day and just know what's there and also identify any hazards such as holes you might step in or things you might trip over. Just that way you feel a little bit more at ease out there. All right, so I do have a question for people who do attend star parties. For those of you that have spoken about light pollution at a star party, what concerns are being brought up to you? Let me know down in the comments below. I'd like to hear it. Moving into the last part here, and that is the common fear that there are people willing to harm them out in the darkness. Now, 
There are tons of studies being done on crime rates, and it is being found that a lot more crime is actually being committed during the day as opposed to the night. And the reasoning for this is primarily because these people don't want to deal with others when they're performing their crime. So if they're a thief, they don't want to deal with you. They want to grab the stuff and leave. So they are going in when you're not home. Uh, at night, they're going into the business when you're not there. So that is the example there of a nighttime crime. They're trying to avoid others in order to get away with their crime. All right, and to help with the safety part of this, in regards to dealing with people in the city, again, like I said, bring a friend or your dog in places where that is possible. I know it's not possible in every situation, say leaving work at night, you can't have your dog with you at all times, but generally if you have somebody with you, that'll just help ease your mind. And again, letting people know where you are is still a great tip in the city City, especially if you're going out to an event or a bar or something like that. And when it comes to other people, just remember that people have busy lives. You probably have one, I have one. Other people out at night also probably have one and usually aren't planning any ill will. To help out with the safety in the city and to ease the fears of those that are afraid of the dark, the IDA is working hard to make sure that light pollution is reduced to make it easy to observe from the safety of your backyard. We are working with city, county, state, and country leaders around the world to make sure areas are intelligently lit. We are reducing the glare from street lights and billboards. We are trying to educate neighborhoods about light trespass, so one neighbor's light shining into the next neighbor's property. And we are working on eliminating shadowed areas where those that wish to harm others can hide. That way things are just a little bit more softly lit and you can see where everybody is. All of this is to help increase the safety at night while shielding the lights from the night sky so that way everybody can observe and enjoy the night. And if you wanna know more about what the IDA is doing in your local area about light pollution, go to darksky.org and find your local chapter and get involved. If you found this video helpful, please do like, comment, and then maybe consider subscribing. I wanna thank you for watching. Clear, dark skies.